This doesn't look like some of the ridiculous monstrosities that the AI puts together. Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you another episode of Ultima Admiral Dreadnoughts. This is our 1920s German campaign, episode 7. We are currently at war with the Italian Empire for the second time. And I've moved my fleets into their territory, and we have a couple submarine attacks, so nothing too exciting here. All we can do is auto-resolve. Unfortunately, a little light damage, which is pretty crazy, seeing as we have an absolute metric boatload of anti-submarine warfare in this fleet. But, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles. That's more like it. No damage to us in a sunk submarine there and then just some new technology moving forward. So I thought I would uh, brush up on where we are in the campaign. So we have three fairly large fleets and they're basically in place. I'm going to keep one around here, one here. I might actually shift this one up, um, maybe over here and shift this fleet here. But all three of our fleets are pretty beefy. They have three of our Bismarck-class battleships that are refitted with radar. Um, one of our Scharnhorst-class battlecruisers also refitted with radar. And then I believe it is three of our Wolfsburg-class heavy cruisers. Those have the uh, new 9-inch guns on them. And then three of these Deutschland-class heavy cruisers, which have 11.1-inch guns. So pretty beefy fleet, and then three destroyers. They're just there to screen, add anti-submarine warfare to the fleet. Uh, they just have small 4.1-inch guns, some torpedoes, lots of mines, 900 kits, depth charges, all of the usual destroyer jazz. Um, oh yeah, and they're part of the fleet to help clear mines with that 900 kit Type 4. But I have three of these fleets, and all three of them are moving into the Mediterranean. I believe I am working on a fourth. Uh, yeah, oh, I have, I say working on, I think it is already completed minus the destroyers. Yep, there we go. So I already have a fourth fleet basically built. Um, and as you can see, we just have tons of money. Also missing a battle cruiser in this fleet, but I could always move one of my extra Scharnhorst class battle cruisers over into Hamburg. And uh, oh, and then to show you, I have two of these. Um, we'll call them rapid reaction battle cruiser fleets. It's two battle cruisers, two light cruisers, and two destroyers. And then up at Tallinn, I have. Um, well, I mean, you could call it a third one of these rapid reaction fleets. I have another group of two, two Scharnhorst class battle cruisers, two light cruisers, but this time three destroyers, mainly because I want to mine out this area so that when the Russians go through and we're at war, they take a bunch of mine damage. I think, uh, so I think I have a battle cruiser fleet at Wilhelmshaven, Bremen, and then soon to be Tallinn. Uh, Palau, Pilau, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, Kiel, Emden, and Hamburg are my uh, battleship ports because they are quite large. I really wish I had Danzig. Um, I really wish that Germany would invade Western Poland, but oh well. And then just uh, four, four destroyers at Helgeland. Um, create, once again, creating minefields is basically what they are doing. So that is where we stand. Hopefully there'll be some, um, uh, battles coming up soon. Although I don't know what the Italians have as far as a fleet, especially in the Mediterranean. Looks like they only have two battleships, a battle cruiser, two cruisers, and three destroyers. So... Might be a pretty quick war with them, but really I want to go to war with the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And you can see we are pretty close. This increased tension a little bit more 
with the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And that would be great if we have enough men. Doesn't really say army force 183,000. Um, it, it would be great if we could invade one of these areas. Actually, the best would be if we could invade Western Poland and Netherlands and Belgium. But uh, unfortunately, you can't control things like that. Anyways, thought I would show off where we are in the campaign. And I shall see you in probably the next turn and, or just when something interesting happens. Unfortunately, nothing too exciting has happened in the next turn, but I just wanted to show you something that I believe is part of this patch, and it is to show how your forces in the area are affecting the trade commerce or the destruction of enemy troop transport ships. The only thing I would say is... I actually think they should let us fight this out instead of auto-resolving. I mean, obviously give us the chance to auto-resolve, but the problem here is that I'm going to click auto-resolve and not all 10 of these troop transports will be destroyed. And with all of this, all 10 of these troop transports should be destroyed. I mean, just just the battlecruiser Mackinson should destroy all 10 of these troop transports. So. We'll hit auto resolve and as you can see only two troop transports sunk and that was a massive fleet of mine although port damage to the port so maybe my ships were attempting to destroy the port more than go after the transports but a little little odd it, it is nice that they show you how the transports are being sunk but um i'd like them to expand upon it a little bit more um at least I, I would really like to see that. Well, of course, as soon as I do something, uh, the inevitable happens. And while I want to go to war with the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the timing is a little bit terrible. But that's probably my own fault for poking the bear. Uh, we will take this war, though. Um, so, minus 10, naval prestige. No, 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 we don't want any plus with them. Yep. Uh, or sorry, plus 15 naval prestige, minus 3 in rest, minus 3 relations. That is what we will do. So war with the Austro-Hungarian Empire it is. And the reason I say the timing is wrong is because I, I decided to initiate a naval invasion of Sardinia because the Italians don't have a fleet. So there's nothing to oppose me here. Um, and... Yeah, I, I, it would be really nice to have a port of operations within the Mediterranean. My two reasonable choices were Sardinia or Tripolitania, um, Tripoli here. And Sardinia just seemed like the easier one to take. So here's some more submarine attacks. Oh, man. Oh, oh, I would I'd really like to see how the anti-submarine warfare works. And this says submarines not detected. I have so much sonar in that fleet. Depth charges. I have destroyer screens. The fact that one of my battleships took medium damage is not great. And now it's repairing somewhere. Very, very odd. So let's, let's see how this goes over here. And no damage to the subs and damage to us. That I don't like that not not a fan of that um i mean submarines going after a major task force like that i mean it's not unheard of but wow with with the amount of sonar i have in there that just um that baffles me that none of the submarines were detected and nothing was taken out so might have to rethink about how many destroyers i take in a task force maybe Maybe I need to uh, go six destroyers in the task force, all with their sonar, um, see if that adds to it, but pretty pretty interesting there. Maybe uh, maybe submarines are a little bit more worthwhile. Um, and then here's just a undefended port. Go take care of this. In zero transport sun. Uh, auto resolve, you kill me. There should be all seven transports sunk. I would see like this is what I'm I I would really love to do maybe not a whole fleet per se, 
But I would love more convoy missions in the game. I watch other YouTubers and sometimes they get a lot of convoy missions, but for myself, I don't seem to ever have many convoy missions where my light cruisers go out. Now, I've said this before, is Germany, um, it's a lot harder to do so because you're you're up in the north uh northern part of Europe and there's not a lot of convoys that cross you, but um you know, even in my playthroughs, is like Italy, France, when I played as Japan, felt like not a lot of convoy missions. So, um, well, England just got wrecked by mines. Tons. So transport losses, France and England losing a lot of transports too. So Germany mobilizes, okay, yeah, this is our fleet invasion of Sardinia. And then England and France are going at it. Good old Hundred Years' War over there. And then um, some Pratt in the United States is provoking Germany. So, all right. Uh, now what I need to do is move my fleet properly into this invasion point here. And hopefully, ah, I lost a battleship right there. So maybe you could move, uh, not lost, but it went to repair itself. Let's move you back over here. And I have tons of money, so maybe I could move out this fleet from Wilhelmshaven uh, over here too. Let's just start really putting pressure on the Italians and the Austro-Hungarians. Um, this naval invasion, the percentages aren't great. Maybe I can up it. I also need to see where my ship went. So, Thessaloniki. So that's Greece, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, because Greece is my ally. Yep. <laughs> and our ship puts their port capacity way beyond the max. Um, interesting. This is why, I mean, not that these ports can handle my battle cruisers, but this is why I need um I need a springboard in the Mediterranean. I mean, Tripoli can't really handle my battleships either, but you know, if we could take, well, none of these ports are good. Ugh. Yeah, we we just need a port. I mean, if we could, you know, take over Italy, that would be um that would be rough for Italy, but pretty cool. Oh, Austro, Austria Hungary is invading Ukraine. Poor Ukraine. They just, uh, everybody wants to invade them. Everybody. So, all right, that is where we are at, at the moment. And uh, we'll see if, <laughs> let's see if these submarines continue doing as much damage as they are. All right, looks like uh, quite a few things are happening right here. Might be a bunch of overwhelming engagements here. Like, we've caught their battle cruiser. Uh, actually, looks to be a pretty good battle cruiser. 16 inch guns, lots of armor, nice speed on it. So, that's pretty cool to see that um, on paper, this looks like a nice build for a battle cruiser. Um, absolute boatload of one and a half inch guns. That would destroy convoys and destroyers. Quite cool. Um, and then. More concise calibers. It would be nice if uh, they had turrets that were more similar. As you can see here, there's like um, one triple 4.3 inch turret, two double 4.3 inch turrets, 28 triple one and a halfs, and then eight by two one and a halfs. Uh, I don't know how that affects your gunnery. Uh, if anybody knows, please let me know if uh, having different types of turrets but of the same caliber affects your gunnery that would be interesting to know but on paper uh quite quite nice uh very heavily armored and very heavily gunned so much more heavily armored than our battle cruiser than our shark horse so let's uh let's go in and try to sink this bad boy now presumably the enemy is just going to turn tail and flee but whatever he's just 
screen, 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 doesn't, doesn't really matter. Go on torpedo evasion, torpedo evasion, times 10. Yeah, so presumably the enemy will flee here. That's, wow, he is so far away. He's heading right for us. Uh, this actually looks like a well-designed ship. Wow. I mean, just at first glance, I don't have any data on it yet, but this looks like a ship. This doesn't look like some of the ridiculous monstrosities that the AI puts together. This uh, could be a proper ship. Oh, is he turning tail and fleeing? No, he's actually presenting himself for a broadside, so that is good to see. Um, however, we have radar. I do wish in this game identification was quicker, or that certain things increase ide identification. Maybe they do, and I'm just not aware of it. But I feel like the closer you are to the enemy, of course, should have some identification. Uh, different towers, I think, should have better identification. I feel like radar should help out. Obviously, radar you know, creates blips, and I'm not 100% behind how radar worked in World War II, but, I mean, the larger the target, the, the larger the blip on the radar, and you should be able to deduce speed, and then uh, when it comes to naval warfare, what you would do is you would use your radar plus your generic, um, like your stereoscopic rainfinders or coincidence rainfinders, and sort of calibrate those things together. And that's uh, that's why ships with radar became, their, their gunnery was quite accurate. Like the, uh, the Bismarck at the beginning of World War II with its early form of radar. Let's start turning, I'm not entirely sure. I think those torpedoes are going uh, no, they're, they're heading toward my battle cruisers. I think we have turned out of it. So that, that battle cruiser is very well armored. Oh, oh no, 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 I can see. Ah, no, I, I identified it and then didn't look at everything. That is a shame. I wanted to see what the Italians were um, putting out there. Nuts. I wish you could see some identification at the end game. Um, identification stats. I don't think you can. But yeah. Um, I mean, not, not too shabby of a ship. Uh, it only hit us once by the looks of it, but and it took a boatload of damage, but I mean, it's being shot by state-of-the-art battleships and battle cruisers. so what can you expect there? And as usual, after the first battle, the enemy always wants to sue for peace. Uh, I'd like to take Sardinia, so let's fight to the end and just sort of bleed them out. We'll probably be blockading them soon. And then here's a battle with some Austro-Hungarians. Um, that looks like it's a uh, Pretty terrible battleship and pretty terrible cruisers so we shall see here three by one ten and a half inch guns and 20 by one 3.1 little odd there um I like that battle cruiser that we fought oh and same fleet okay so We'll just uh, take out another small little fleet here. Nice foggy day in the Mediterranean. Uh, I don't like tight. I wish you could set predetermined formations. That would be something that I would really love to see in this, is going into battle, how you set up your divisions in the game. I just really wish things wouldn't crash what are you do why 
Okay. That was weird. Um, but yeah, pre... Uh, like, being able to set up your own divisions... I mean, not bad, but still terrible. It's definitely an older older model. That's a World War I uh, era hull. Let's go left this time. How far away are we? Closing distance quite quickly. They're struggling to catch up because they collided and did weird things. Um, looks like a lot of my fleet is out of flagship range. How? So what are you doing? 25, 29. So they're trying to catch up. Should start getting some hits here. Uh, nearly minus 11% due to uh, sea waves. What is that? Gun recoil. I don't know if you guys saw that, but it looked like it went all the way up to negative 60% on gun recoil. Oh, wow. Okay. So after, I mean, it makes sense. It, those are massive guns. Well, we took a hit on Prince Aldebert. Huh. Uh, so those secondaries, after after the main guns shoot, those secondaries aren't going to hit squat. Is that went over a hundred percent? I think it was near a hundred twenty percent. What have you been hit by, Prince Aldebert? Five inch. Oh, fit. what am I looking at? Uh, five inch average armor penetrated. Was it a 15 inch gun that penetrated us? I need to be able to read that a little bit better. I'm not entirely sure. That was a big hit. More big hits going on. I put smoke out on our destroyer so it doesn't take too much damage. Can you guys stop ramming my ships? Ah, oh, this is... If there is something that I, I wish they would change more above anything else in the entire game, it is the fact that your own ships ram your ships even when set to avoid ships. And they force them out of formation like that. Um, it's probably my biggest gripe. It, it does drive me nuts. Because pushing out of formation really does affect... Like, you could push it out of flagship um, distance. And you could push it out of... Uh, you, you can change its speed. And speed can affect how your ship's accuracy, um, or I shouldn't say how, speed does affect your ship's accuracy. So, um, that wasn't great. Well, I mean, that's such marginal damage. Wow, for it taking that little damage, it sure took on a lot of water. That's for sure. So I think it took a 15-inch gun uh, hit is basically... What I'm reading there, damage received, one hit, 570 damage, killed 22 crew, hit 5 inch average armor penetration, so it hit somewhere in the front, one flooding, except it flooded the front and the rear? Am I looking at that right? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. So that's the, that's the rear, the aft. So that's the weaker part of my ship, too. Um, because of the all or nothing scheme. So, 5 inch aft belt. Does the citadel not affect before and aft belt? Is that how that works? That would make sense, I guess. Uh, just trying to understand a little bit more how this works. 
16.3 average effective pen. Five inches of average armor penetrated. So the Citadel must be only part of the main belt. And that would make sense because it's an all or nothing scheme. So that the armor is, you know, just in the center of the ship. Um, man. I need to think about that because uh, the rudder is really important for these ships. But, oh well. Um... Easy, easy win. Nothing, nothing too crazy there. All right, this is becoming comical. They really need to change the AI's behavior of, oh no, we lost one fleet battle, sue for peace. I, I want, I want to continue fighting. <laughs> I just, it just makes me laugh. Yes, yeah, so a bunch of light damage. Um, some crew saved. British keep taking mine damage. Same with the Soviets. I wonder if that's us that's causing all that mine damage to the Soviets. I wonder if it works that way. Transport losses, still the French and the British. And one of our invasions was pushed back. Holy moly. Guys, what, what are our ground forces doing here? 48,000 losses to 3,450 losses? It's 1934. What are you doing? Like running across the trenches in trench warfare that um ugh, that's disgusting wow so what's going on here 440,000 versus 518 so not great and then they have spanish ally why are we doing these pushes if uh it's nowhere near in our favor that's weird. So we're up to a 75% success chance in Sardinia. Um, those are numbers I like. I have my backup fleets over here. I think I would like to position this fleet a little further forward and then move this fleet um, to about there. Uh, so I have my three major battleship fleets in the Mediterranean, really just invading Sardinia. And then my two battle cruiser fleets in reserve. I have a fourth battleship fleet that is rounding out. It's just missing a battle cruiser, which I could always pull from uh, Talon. And then I have another battle cruiser fleet. Oh no, no, that's just a Talon. So I still have another battle cruiser fleet available if needed. Um, and then three more battleships. But I'd prefer not to put all of my eggs in one basket. It's always nice to have a fallback fleet too. You never know when something really wonky happens. Like, what if things absolutely go catastrophically wrong with Russia and they declare war on us? Or, you know, what if something easy pops up like, oh, a port strike against, uh, like, Copenhagen or Danzig? Or, that's probably not an easy one. But, you know, something like that to where... I don't have all my eggs in one basket. As far as research, I meant to show this off. We are pushing on with Marine Diesel Engine 2. I'm hoping that will be uh, what we need to finally build a larger battleship. Um, engine efficiency has been the biggest problem with building anything larger than our Bismarck class battleship because German towers, it's, it's hard to put two funnels on the German towers without having mismatched towers and I do like aesthetics in this game so when you have a front tower that's big and a rear tower that's a skinny one it doesn't look right if you gave me two skinnies or two bigs that would be great but the larger rear tower for the Germans doesn't have a funnel port at least that I have available or that I have seen so I always find that is a problem with the Germans is I, I don't like their towers it makes it very difficult to build their ships um anyways ran over let's keep going forward november 1934 and the submarine attacks keep coming uh so they have a, a nice submarine here quite a large one and then two of these um very small little tiny subs but hopefully Nothing happens here. That's a lot of anti-submarine warfare. 
in this group and uh well we're up to not a single point of damage on their subs uh okay all right um not sure how i feel about that but uh I mean, it's nice that submarines do something now, but I feel like with the amount of submarine warfare we have, I mean, destroyers and light cruisers should eat submarines for for breakfast. Um, ah, thankfully, one of them sunk. Austro-Hungarian uh, sub uh, sunk. So SC class, big, big sub. 3,213 tons, four bow torpedo tubes, two stern torpedo tubes, four inch gun, advanced diesel electric engines. So that would be actually pretty difficult to um, hear. Stealth 9.33. I don't know how stealth works. Um, I guess I only have depth charges type 2, but I do have sonar 3 on all of these ships, I believe. I think I have sonar 3. Um, and speaking of subs, plus 20% submarine stealth power. I I should probably mess around with subs as the, the devs have said that they've, you know, increased the effectiveness of subs. And as you can see there, um, they're actually causing some decent damage. They caused one of my battleships to go to port for, I think, eight months, although it would be more like four months if uh, Greece had a port that could actually handle one of my battleships but um oh poor trans jordania of jordan you've been conquered by france sorry and then england and france are still going at it and then our invasion of sardinia up to 77 percent that's a bunch of subs over here so no damage there 20 percent that's what they consider light Oh, that's, that's a fifth of the ship. That's not light. Oh, gosh. And one of our destroyers. So, not liking not liking that. Um, I was thinking uh, in the time that I was sitting here twiddling my thumbs as the end turns have become quite lengthy again with the AI building ships, uh, I, I think I need to build a bunch more destroyers and i'm thinking something like 12 more for my four battleship fleets and then maybe two more for my uh battle cruiser fleets maybe so that would that would put all my battle cruiser fleets to three because i have three in talon let's actually make it uh go up to four per battle cruiser so i need another three here so 17 new destroyers i think i think that's a good idea here oh i uh can build more space here i wonder how long that's been um i wish there was something that came up that was like hey uh your your max shipyard size build is complete cool uh would you like to continue building yes of course Transport capacity is going up really slow. That's taking longer than it usually does, I think. 14, 14 years into a campaign and it's not at 200% yet, and we haven't really taken a single transport uh, loss this entire thing. But um, I, think, I think I like that, and I'll select the ports, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get that rolling Hamburg. Oh, okay, so that other fleet is good. All right, so that, that's where we sit. Um, hopefully Sardinia will be ours fairly soon. Well, this is awkward. Peace signed between Germany and Austro-Hungarian Empire. I feel like I worked so hard to anger them for so long, and we only really had one true battle against them, so... Uh, and that looks like that was all of the meeting engagements. So after Chief Admiral Ludwig Weyprecht's intervention, the Austro-Hungarian Empire and Germany signed a peace treaty, which I'm not really happy about, um, to be honest. So nuts. Nuts, nuts, nuts. Uh, well, at least Marine Diesel Engine 2 and then 21,000 ton <laughs> cruiser displacement that is a big heavy cruiser absolutely big i wonder what the 
largest heavy cruiser was because even the um Deutschland class heavy cruiser I think it was in the 14,000 ton mark it would be interesting to see what some of maybe those Japanese and American heavy cruisers in the war came up to holy moly England and France are just going at it um absolutely decimating each other and then we don't nobody likes that uh, Spain is attacking Libya uh, that's that's interesting so let's see how oh that's good 86 percent in Sardinia liking that I mean the the Italians just don't have anything I think all they have left are submarines and yeah and then I, I think I showed this off, but we are building, I think it's 17 destroyers, and mainly for the purpose of anti-submarine warfare, adding three more destroyers to each of our battleship fleets, so it'll be six destroyers per battleship fleet, and then adding two to our battlecruiser fleet, so it'll be four, battle, uh, four destroyers per battlecruiser fleet. I don't know if that's a great idea. I should probably create like a light cruiser, well... No, I don't really want light cruisers going into battle with the battleship. So, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure there, but uh, it's it's been eye-opening to see how well the submarines have been doing against our fleets. Usually submarines are absolutely useless. <laughs> Just like that, the reign of terror of the Italian submarines continues. So hopefully we can do something here. No, no damage at all to their subs. Uh, I don't like that. I do not like that at all. As I said, I have I have sonar on every ship. <sighs> okay, well, you know, not much you can do when uh, it's auto resolve. So, um, still England and France just going at it. Greece with like a Bismarck class battleship. No, you guys can't. No, I, I don't like giving my allies battleships or battle cruisers. I'll sell them. Like light cruisers, destroyers, and maybe even uh, bah, 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 bah. maybe even heavy cruisers. Usually, I just sell them what I mothball. Um, but that's um, during wartime too. I don't want to be tied up for twenty six months because I would like to see if I can build some bigger, better battleships too. Uh, Germany gains control of Sardinia. This is huge, absolutely massive. Gives us some decent sized ports over here yeah i'm i'm really happy with that because i could put uh put a battle cruiser in each one and then maybe like two light cruisers and two destroyers in each one i think that would work sharn horse is 31 and a half and then that would be about you know, 15,000 round, rounding down. So, you know, if we just rounded all of this up, just went uh, 32 plus 15, 47. Like, yeah, we, we would be under 50,000 tons there. Ooh, I think, uh, I think we will have to do that. Let's build, yeah, let's build two Sharnhorse class battle cruisers and build four light cruisers and four more destroyers and that sounds amazing and then we have we have a nice setup in the mediterranean that should be able to interdict convoys and the like See, now, now I'd be okay with uh, peace with Italy. <laughs> need to need to look at... Okay, so you guys... You guys can go back to wherever you came from. We'll say you came from Bremen. You need to um, repair, refit. How is three more months there? What's the biggest port that Greece even has. Yeah, and their ports are like filled to the brim. See, those are our old Munich class battle 
cruiser or heavy cruisers. They have some old ships of ours. Poor, poor Greece. Um, you're you're an interesting ally. So what do we have over here? No no damage whatsoever on this fleet, and some damage on this fleet. And this is the one where the Ajir is in Greece, and then a little bit of damage over here, but nothing major. Hamburg is just a fleet in waiting. I wonder, we could go grab Tripolitania, I think. So if we look at politics, go into Italian Empire. Oh, no Tripolitania. Is it because we're not close enough? Is that why? Politics, naval invasion, Western Sicily. I mean, that's not terrible. I don't know. What was it? It was a hundred thirty three thousand. And it's not a bad idea. What do the what do the Italians have left for a fleet? Two battleships, two heavy cruisers, three destroyers, and thirty-five submarines. I mean, this would be taking Sicily. That would be amazing. So let's let's do that. Uh, you can see right here. Let's uh, let's invade Sicily. Yes, and then. Let's move you, uh, I'll say probably right here, and then move this fleet probably right here should be in the bubble, and I'll, I'll reposition them on the next turn when I figure out exactly where they need to be. I just, I don't want them merging together, of course. And then... Could put you guys sort of over here. And this is great because these ports will now supply fuel and ammo to all of these fleets. This is this is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, taking Sardinia is great. Taking Sicily would be better because these are larger um what do you call it? Larger ports. And if I could have a port that could actually hold one of my battleships or two or three, that would be that would be amazing. And I, I think these with my port capacity, um, they'll be even they'll be even bigger because Cagliari under the Italian control, I think, was only like below fifty thousand or something like that. They they weren't they weren't as large as this. So that was that was huge taking sardinia absolutely love that and that gives us some more worldly presence and lets us wage war a little bit easier um because you know pushing these fleets all the way down here quite quite a it's quite taxing on the fuel um, and not that it matters for us but the the further or the more fuel you use the larger deficit you have in your monthly balance um but it just doesn't matter because our economy is just absolutely stupid like insane so hopefully we can take sicily before italy signs a peace agreement with us i will oppose any peace agreement that happens until uh until we take sicily with that being said i think this is a good point to end the episode so if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Please like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think about this campaign. Um, or even Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts as it stands right now. Um, and it, it doesn't have to be positive um, as long as it's constructive. I mean, nobody likes, you know, just uh, um, kind of dickish behavior. But uh you know, if uh, what do you like about the game? What do you not like about the game? What do you wish they would change? I think I've given some vocal points on my end. I mean, it absolutely drives me nuts when other ships 
crash collide into my own ships when they're on ship avoidance. Uh, uh, avoidance. Um, torpedoes drive me nuts. I, I think like the enemy, they're too accurate with them. Your torpedoes are not accurate enough. Torpedo evasion should be better on your end, things like that. Um, whether one of the commentators mentioned like the battle of, I think it was North Cape or whatever, where the British finally destroyed the Sharn horse. That actually did have really bad weather. It was a mix of snow and um, and a, a, a gale force storm. So there were battles that are in storms. Just however, um, at least from a YouTuber's perspective, fighting battles in a storm really sucks because you guys can't see anything. I mean, I can't see anything, so you guys definitely can't see anything. So just things like that. And then, of course, you know, the world's economy uh, <laughs> could always be better. Um, submarine warfare is, I feel like it's a little half-baked, but could be better. Anyways, enough of me ranting. As I said, please like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. I greatly appreciate you guys. And as always, until next time.